session. So let's get into the next portion. Uh, the next portion is from Ayah 26 to the end of the chapter, which is chapter Ayah number two, uh, 42, sorry. <clears throat> so I will recite, uh, but I will start from Ayah 24 because I want to preserve the meaning. And the meaning is preserved if we start by uh, using this ayah because Allah says, then let man look at his food. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting to explain to us from that point onwards. So I will read from 24 until the end, although we will explain uh, also. We will come back to ayah 25. <laughs> فلينظر الإنسان إلى طعامه أنا صببنا الماء صبا ثم شققنا الأرض شقا فأنبتنا فيها حبا وعنبا وقبا وزيتونا ونخلا وحدائق غلبا وفاكهة وأبا متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم فإذا جاءت الصاخة يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه وجوه يومئذ مسفرة ضاحكة مستبشرة ووجوه يومئذ عليها غبرة ترهقها قترة أولئك هم الكفرة الفجرة. Okay, so I will explain a few things today, inshallah, and I will also, in addition to the tafsir, I will uh, do a little bit comments on tajweed because it's important. So I'm going to go back to Ayat 25 where I stopped last week. Um, by the way, is the sound okay? Do you hear me well? Do you hear me well? Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I hope it's clear. So, in addition, as I told you, my brothers and sisters, last week, in addition to this qira'ah, which is one of the ways to recite this uh, chapter, which is qira'at uh, hafs, we also have another qira'ah, which is called qira'at warsh. Uh, so, for example, for qira'at hafs, hafs, we say, Okay. In Qira'at Hafs, uh, in Qira'at uh, Warsh, sorry. Warsh, you can find it um, in many countries in Africa. For example, my, my country, we use Qaloon and Warsh, and Algeria also, and many countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, they, they use... Uh, Riwayat Warsh or Qalun. So in this Riwayat or Qira'ah, um, which is part of the seven other types of uh, recitations, uh, we can have Inna, okay? Instead of Anna, Sababun al Asabba, we have Inna Sababun al Asabba, and it's also recognized as one of the Qira'at. So I'm going to show you this in a short video from a, um, a very nice reciter, mashallah. I'd like to introduce to you today. He is an Algerian. His name is Yasin Al-Jazairi or Yasin the Algerian. Um, and you can see from the screen, you see the YouTube video, right? Yes. Uh, so you can see um, the recitation of Warsh, An Nafi from Nafi. Uh, so let me just go to that portion. You can follow with your mushaf, with your book, and you can see, you can notice the difference between anna and inna. Okay, listen carefully. <laughs> 
ۚ إِنَّا صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ صَبًّا ثُمَّ شَقَقْنَا الْأَرْضَ شَقًّا ۚ عُثْمَان إِمَامُ عُثْمَان مُصْطَفَى كَمَلٍ I'm sure he's also from somewhere in Africa. Right. You, you must have noticed something else in uh, Riwayat uh, Warish is that Al Wasl here, you see the parts in green are the parts which are different from uh, Hafs. Thumma uh, shaqaqna larda. Not shaqaqna larda. Shaqaqna larda. So the Wasl is even made more uh, succinct, meaning the connection between the previous uh, word and the next, the following word. He says, Thumma shaqaqna larda. Okay, so this is just introducing you to other qira'at. Now, another thing which we notice here um, in ayah number 27, which is coming, uh, I want you to also pay attention to the, the meme here at the top. And I think it happens quite, quite a few times in this chapter. Uh, we call that qalb or iqlab, you remember, right? So when you have a meme like that, the noon, and that now is changed into a meme. Okay, I think there's another example of this happening in this chapter. I'm trying to find it for you. Here. Kirami Dabara. Okay. Normally in this ayah, which is ayah 16, you have tenween. So it should be read be read as Kiramin Dabara. But the in of tenween is maqlub qalb. Iqlab change into a meme instead of a noon quality. So we say with the lips slightly open. And to remind you a bit what Iqlab is, if you see my screen, uh, it's just a modification of the noon quality or tenween quality into a meme with the diacritic marker at the top with the meme quality uh, for the noon. Okay. So this will come in A number 27 for us since we are starting from A25 today. Okay. So these are just a few technical things. So starting from A25, uh, which we have talked about last week. So here in this area, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the rain, the rain and the rains, the abundant rains. It says in the translation in torrents and the water that descends from the skies, right? Uh, this is also evoked, but the rain, the quality of abundance coming from the sky, which causes the food to grow, right? Because Allah says, look at your food. Where does that food start? It starts from the sky with the rain falling down um, which is the beginning of everything for us as far as our nourishment right everything starts from the rain that allah in abundance uh, gives us as a blessing from him um, there is another chapter that shows us also this quality of uh, how the rain comes from the sky in surah al-waqi'ah right so in this chapter, chapter, you can write it down, brothers and sisters, chapter 56. Chapter 56, verse 68 and 69. We also have this image of the rain coming in abundance. Have you, and have you seen the water that you drink? And then in the next ayah, Allah is making us think. Is it you, O oh man, who brought it down, this water from the clouds, or is it we who bring it down 
Of course, it's the we, the majestic we of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So you see, um, in this verse of Surat Abasa, Allah is making us think about how this water is brought as a favor from him to us to start the cycle of life and to start the cycle of nourishment for us. The first step for us to get our food is the water from the sky as a blessing and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we go to ayah number 26. Okay, then the translation says, then we broke open the earth, split, splitting it with sprouts. Okay, this is, an, we have an important note here. Uh, so it is not just the descending of the water that brings out the blessings from the earth, the food, right? As you know, my brothers and sisters, people from the past were punished as an outcome of rains, heavy rains. We know the story of Qawm Nuh with the flood and the deluge, right? We know that story. So rain uh, can be a blessing, but also a form of punishment. But the added blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings upon us are explicitly stated in ayah number 26, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm also making the earth split so that after the rain falls, those sprouts will grow. Okay, so that is the blessing. Um, in order to accompany this meaning, to show that it is not just water that is uh, enough for us to, to get our nourishment, because water, sometimes uh, it rains, but uh, the crops don't grow. Have you heard about that before? Uh, there is rain, but crops don't grow. There's something, there's some illness or something in the soil that doesn't make the, there's erosion, there is uh, different forms of uh, calamities that do not facilitate the process of uh, the crops growing. And there is a hadith which talks about this, you know, which I'd like to report to you. Uh, there is a hadith um, here, which is taken from uh, Sahih Muslim, where I will just read the translation because it would be faster. Abu Huraira reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's messenger, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as saying, the famine would not break out because of drought, but there would be famine despite heavy rainfall as nothing would grow from the earth. Okay, so the, the blessing of Allah is first to bring down water, Second, to facilitate the crops from the, the, uh, from the soil to grow into fruits and vegetables and different things. So you see that that's not uh, an automatic thing that uh, rain will bring out the blessings from Allah uh, as fruits. Therefore, the point that we are trying to make here, especially to point out the ayah number 26, is that... Um, Rain is not the automatic cause of the crops to grow, but ayah 26 and 27 are the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us to cause those crops to grow after the rainfall. So ayah 27 says, فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّ And caused to grow within it grain. Okay. So I hope you understand that point, brothers and sisters, that uh, rain is a blessing, but it's not enough. We need the more blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get that food and that nourishment. Okay. So in ayah number 27, uh, al-habb, I think we have already mentioned this before. It refers to all sorts of grains and seeds, seeds, those seeds, right? Which are also the beginning of everything. So the rain, beginning of things, seeds, the beginning of things. In the same way as you remember, brothers and sisters, we have in chapter 78, uh, Surat an naba Allah starts with the example of seeds before fruits and vegetables, before anything else. So he talks about grains and seeds before moving on to other things. Like for instance, if I remind you, if we remember this together and we go to, um, yes, let me just go to chapter 78. 
So chapter 78 also has the same parallel because Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْثَجَّجَ And we send down from the rain clouds pouring water. What happens next? لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا Okay. The same parallel or the same analogy here between um, chapter 80 verse 27 and chapter 78 verse 15 that everything starts with grains and seeds before anything else comes. So you remember that, right? Um, the grains first and after that, the vegetation. Same thing here. Habban and then and fruits, etc. etc. So this ayah 27 here shows the importance of seeds and grains. So, you know, it is like now, nowadays, these seeds and these grains are like common currency. You know, in some countries, they, uh, they use it as currency or money, exchanging seeds for seeds. Or it was like that before and probably it would be the same uh, for the rest of for the rest of uh, you know history, it's like com current, uh, common currency because it, it's uh, that which upon our sustenance is based. Those seeds are the beginning of everything. So I don't know, you can maybe do away with carrots or uh, bananas, but you need those seeds. Those seeds are very important because those are the beginning of the rest. Okay, so we go to Ayah 28. So here we have um, <clears throat> the rest of Allah's blessing. So we have the rain, the splitting of the earth, the growing of those seeds, and other things like fruits and herbage, right? So this is the cycle, the cycle. Um, let's start with Aynaba. Now people will say, maybe we will ask, why is this fruit mentioned? Um, well, to be honest, I have thought about that, and there, there could be different fruits, but Aina, grapes, if you uh, think about it, it's given to us uh, as an example by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, because it's one of the most beneficial fruits for our health. Uh, it's, it's, in fact, if you Google uh, benefits of grapes, uh, you can find a lot of benefits to it, and I've done that for you to save you some time. Um, do you see the picture here? Yes. You see the image? You can do it yourself now. I mean, if you just open your, if you just take your, your phone and check benefits of grapes, um, you realize the benefits it has on our health. And that's another thing which makes us think. Allah is actually using this as a means to make us ponder and reflect and think to show the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. Of course, there's a lot of fruits with different benefits, right? More or less, some fruits will have probably a bit more of something than others. Uh, I'm thinking, for instance, uh, when I was back in uh, Singapore and Malaysia, we have durian. Durian is good, but it has lots of fat, calories. It's high calorie fruit. fruit. <laughs> so it's a balanced fruit, although it has sugar, of course, for people who are diabetic. Uh, but it's a fruit that has a lot of balance for us, you know. So it's just a way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us think about all oh, these blessings coming from this cycle that starts with the rain down to the earth that splits and those grains that transform into those beautiful fruits. Um, and then there is another word in this ayah, ayah 28, verse 28, which is qabba, qabba. So qabba refers to anything that can be reaped or cut, right? If I do this movement to reap something or cut. So we have wheat, for example, wheat, right? We have leafy green vegetables. We have other things like lettuce. So leek, anything you can cut and that will grow back, right? That is the meaning of qadda. So this is, um, uh, I would say, it's a generic word to refer to everything that can grow and be cut or reaped. And that will grow back later if you use what we call a bill hook. You know those bill hooks that you use to cut things and things will actually uh, grow back. 
So if, uh, if you look at this word linguistically, qadda, it's also mentioned um, in a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I like to cross-reference different, uh, different sources especially if you want brothers and sisters to increase your knowledge of the Arabic language uh, as you are studying the Quran and the Hadith, the corpus of texts. Um, this word Qadda appears in the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in a Hadith. If you go to Sunan uh, Sahih Abu Dawood, Sahih Abu Dawood, and you, if you just open now a Google page and go to Sahih Abu Dawood, and check for hadith number four, 4151. Uh, I have found it for you here. Okay, I found it already. So uh, the translation of this hadith, or I will just read it in Arabic first and I'll give you the English. Hadathana Musa ibn Ismail, Hadathana Aban, Hadathana Yahya, Hadathana Imran ibn Hittan, عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان لا يترك في بيته شيء فيه تصليب إلا قضبه قضب قضبه What does that mean? I have the translation for you, so don't worry. Um, narrated Aisha, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم never left in his house anything containing the figure of a cross without destroying it. Okay? The meaning of destruction, قضب. cut, destroy, break. So this word appears also in the sunnah in the corpus of narrations of a hadith. So you can check it out for yourself. It is Sahih um, Abu <clears> Dawood. <throat> and I have the Urdu for those of you who read Urdu. Um, I don't know if the word in Urdu for qadba is the same. Can our readers of Urdu tell us? I cannot read it. <laughs> okay, so inshallah, you got yeah. the reference. Um, is this the word used? I don't see any word qadba here anyways in order. Yes, there is. To, to destroy, destroy it. Salih. 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 But I don't see the word qadba. I think that is means break. Qadba, break, right, okay. So I was thinking maybe a word got into Urdu, but in this case, maybe not. Jazakallah khair, sister. So, when we go back, we go back to uh, the chapter, and then the next ayah, ayah 29, Allah is giving us another example of the beautiful blessings he has brought as food, because remember the beginning of the ver uh, the, the series of verses says, let humans, let men look at his food. And then the next verse, verse 29 says, We have two beautiful um, foods or nourishments that Allah is referring to here in Ayah 29. The olive, not only the olive fruit, but also the olive oil. And Nakhla, which is the, the tree, the palm tree, and its crop, its, veg, its fruits, which are the dates, right? The dates that we consume, the palm tree. But you know, with palm trees, you can do pretty much many things as well. Uh, and then, um, Ayah 30. And dense gardens, or gardens of dense shrubbery. Uh, another translation provides the word dense orchards uh, with several, several trees of different types from several varieties, several species, al hadaiq Now, hadaiq in Arabic, in Arabic, the word hadaiq describes uh, a place which is tree walled. So it means it's a place which, ha which has trees around it in forms of uh, walls, like the trees are surrounding it as a fence or as a wall, okay? And the word ghulba, uh, means big and magnificent, something majestic, something big. And all of these, again, if we think back, are all, all caused by um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the water which comes from the skies, meaning as ayah 25 as a starting point when Allah says, 
All that comes from that water that goes down to create these beautiful um, gardens and orchards. Okay, then we move to Ayah 31. Okay, and fruit and grass. So, fakiha, fakiha refers to different types of fruit. So, it's a global word that is a generic word to just include a lots of different types of fruits in it. Whereas this word abba uh, is what English, um, the English word for it is father, father, F O double D. E R F O double D E R. So fodder is grass that especially dried hay or straw, which is given to cattle. Okay. It's not given to humans. So this part is not for humans to consume, but is for cattle, for livestock, what we call in Arabic al anam to consume. And again, this points out that uh, Allah has made possible and extracted all these things from water. Okay, the rich, um, you know, variety of crops and vegetables uh, that are extracted from uh, the, the soil as an outcome of the water going down. Now, people will say, why is fruits mentioned here? As a general category, whereas earlier there was the mention of uh, grapes. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these examples in the Quran and alternates between khas to an and between an to khas. Sometimes Allah goes to the specific before going to the general and vice versa where Allah shows us the general and then goes to the specific. So it happens in the Quran. Um, it is quite a frequent device or strategy used in the wording of the Qur'an. And fruit and grass. So as I told you here, this grass, this specific grass is given to animals and it's confirmed in the next ayah. So the faqiha is for humans, right? Fruits is for humans and abba is for livestock. And it's confirmed by ayah 32 where Allah says, Mata'an lakum anamikum. This is enjoyment for you as humans and your livestock, raising livestock, the anamikum, right? So here Allah points us to, uh, to understand that there are things which are enjoyed by us humans, while other things are specific to animals. Like the example from the previous ayah, grass, abba, abba is not for humans to consume. And al-an'am is the word for cattle, you know, sheep, goats, uh, cows, etc., and so on and so forth. Um, there is actually a chapter in the Quran, chapter 6, which is called al-an'am, the cattle. Al-an'am, the cattle. Okay. Now, let's go to ayah 33. In ayah 33, we have, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَ Now, what happens here is that we move to another phase. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described his blessings by making us think, look at your food and look how it is uh, coming about progressively in steps. Here Allah uh, is describing the day of judgment. Now, in this phase, we are moving now to another section or another phase starting from ayah 33 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the day of judgment, yawmul qiyamah. Yawmul qiyamah is day of judgment. So as here, as Now, this is an example of what we call mad lazim. Mad lazim, let's go back to tajweed basics. Mad lazim has six harakat. This is actually the highest degree of lengthening in the Quran. Cannot have longer than this. It is called heavy or uh, muthaqqal, in fact, this type of med is called med kalimi muthaqqal, okay? The med which comes in a word, in a kalima, and heavy, muthaqqal. So uh, this has about six, six harakat, right? 
and it happens in different parts of the Quran. For example, right? So we have harf, uh, we call this harf al istila, followed by mad, which is followed by a letter with shadda. That is why it's a unique type of mad. So the reason why this mad is one of the longest, it's because it happens before or before it, there is a letter called uh, Harf al istila And these letters, you can see in the following picture. For instance, you have um, previous verse, Surat al -Nazi'at. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى Okay, so these letters, whenever they uh, are before a med and also a shadda, a letter, they usually will give a quality of lengthening to the word. Okay, uh, these letters called حروف الاستعلاء حروف الاستعلاء One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Okay. Um, so, as we go back to as make sure this is six harakat. You know why they call it as Because it has this deafening sound. It deafens the ears. Or it bothers the hearing because of its magnitude, right? This, this day of judgment has this heavy, heavy uh, deafening sound to it. It's not talking about the blowing of the trumpet, huh? Is different because this is a sakha is one of the names of the day of judgment and we have several names in the quran for the day of judgment we have al -ha we have a sakha we have also al qari'a al qari'a al um, a few words for it are used in the quran okay so we could we continue ayah 34 Okay, now from ayah, from verse, I want you to pay attention and you can actually take note, my brothers and sisters. Uh, from verse 34 to verse 36, we have some people are described. We have people who are described and they are part of our kin. So, we have five categories of people, right? If we read these, on the day a man will free from his brother and his mother and his father and his wife and his children, okay? On that day, the day of judgment. So um, who are these? They are, in fact, the closest people to us in this, in this dunya, in this life. In this life, they are the closest people to us. But due to the extent of the uh, of the horror, the horror on that day, humans will flee from everyone, including the people who are closest to them. Subhanallah. So this is described until ayah 36. From ayah 34 to ayah 36, we have the description of these people. These family members who are the closest to us, brothers, father, mother, wife or husband, children, right? Um, so imagine if we are in this state and we even flee from the closest kin and family member, what then of other people that are not close to us? We don't even care about them anymore. <laughs> Subhanallah. So this state of fear and horror described in this series of verses uh, is also expressed in another chapter of the Quran, which you can take notes of, Surah Al-Hajj, Surah Al-Hajj. So in chapter called the chapter of pilgrimage, Al-Hajj, if you go specifically to, um, it's chapter 22, by the way, if you go to chapter 22, verse number two, you have also a very graphic, graphic, visual, visually striking representation of this day. And I'm going to read it for you and I will explain. 
So a'udhu billahi wa shaitan rajim. Yawma tarawnaha tazhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arda'at wa tada'u kullu dati hamlin hamlaha wa taran nasa sukara wa ma hum bi sukara walakinna adhab Allah shadeed. Now let's go to the translation of this specific verse. On the day, on the day, meaning the day of judgment, we're talking about the same day as in Surah Abbasa. You see it, on the day you see it, that day when it comes, that day, it means that day when it comes, the day of judgment, every nursing mother nursing her child will be distracted from that child that she was nursing. And every pregnant woman will abort her pregnancy, meaning out of fear, because of the extreme fear. And you will see the people appearing intoxicated, sukara, while they are not intoxicated, but the punishment of Allah is severe. So this is, this subhanAllah is explaining to us um, on a parallel will this, with this series of chapter uh, verses uh, from 34, 35, 36, on that day, on the day a man will flee, flee, escape from his brother and his mother and his father. And usually we don't escape from our parents. We go to our parents when we are in trouble. Sahiba means wife, companion of life. And his children, all of these will not matter on that day. Um, and by the way, I will stop. I'll just pause here. Um, I want to tell you something else. Probably you know this already, but you might not know it. But this state of fear experienced by everyone on their judgment will also be experienced. It will not spare the prophets. Even the prophets will be in this similar state. Yes, they will be in the same state as well of this extreme fear. What will they say to those who come to them seeking uh, either refuge or protection or these prophets will say nafsi 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 okay this is actually attested from a hadith those prophets when people will come to them they will say nafsi 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 means i am preoccupied with my own problems except for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who will intercede for us he will make shafa'a for us, shafa'a. And if you want, um, I have actually found a hadith. There's a long hadith which refers to this, but I will not get into it now, but I will just show you, inshallah. Um, let me just show you first the hadith of shafa'a. See, it's a long hadith whereby different people will start by going chronologically. Uh, they will start with Adam. And they will say to him, you are the father of mankind. Allah created you with his own hand and breathed into you of his spirit. Uh, intercede for us. Make shafa'a, intercede for us with your Lord. And then Adam will say, today my Lord has become angry as he has never become before, nor will ever become thereafter. He forbade me to eat as the fruit of, uh, of the tree, but I disobeyed him. Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. I am preoccupied with my own problems. Go to someone else, go to Noah. And then it goes on with different prophets from Noah to Ibrahim, um, to Musa, to Isa, until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who will make shafa'a or intercede for us. So I cannot read the whole hadith because um, it is quite lengthy, but I will share it in the group, inshallah. I will share it with you in the group and you can read it. You can take your time to read it. So what happens after that? Ayah 37 comes. For every man, for every person that day will be a matter adequate for him. Okay, what does this mean? Everybody everyone will be busy with himself. So humans, men, women will be in a state of awe, in a state of shock, in a state of astonishment 
at that time only caring about their own fate, right? So that is exactly what will happen, caring about their own fate. So, um, I would like to use another hadith to illustrate uh, the meaning of Ayah 37, the meaning of this verse 37. Um, here is the hadith for you, my brothers and sisters. Not this one, this one. So I'm going to read it for you. Our mother Aisha reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people, meaning on judgment day, will be assembled barefoot, barefoot, naked and uncircumcised. And look at the question that uh, Aisha radiallahu anha asked immediately after that. She said, I said, O oh, Rasulullah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, will the men and women look at each other because they are naked, right? And the Prophet وسلم, said, the matter will be too serious for them to notice. Everybody will be busy with their own self. Um, and this hadith, in fact, uh, here it shows the pure, pure nature of Aisha, her chaste nature. We say in Arabic, tahara, because she's concerned with, you know, being in that state of nakedness with haya, shyness, and what will happen if people are naked? Will they look at each other? But at the same time, she also vocalizes um, the Muslims' concern who are within that interaction virtually, right? Because if we take the place, uh, the place of our mother Aisha, عنها, when we hear that the people will be assembled barefoot, naked, and uncircumcised, she vocalizes the same question we would ask. What would happen during that day if everybody is naked? Will they be looking at each other? So it's an issue of genuine concern, right? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to her, and he said, that wouldn't matter because people will be just concerned about themselves. This is the sentence that the Prophet replied to Aisha radiallahu anha is the same meaning of verse 37. Everybody, everyone is busy with their own affairs on that day, right? Everyone is busy with their own affairs on that day. So people are not concerned about looking around them. Um, and then after this verse 37, we have verse 38. And in this Allah now is going to divide the people in two types of, or two sorts or two categories of people, starting from Ayah 38. Here's the first category of people. Um, and I have a question here. It says in, uh, in the English translation, some faces that they will be bright. But here's my question. Please uh, think about it and let me know if you have the answer. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala single out to only mention uh, the faces when choosing to describe the situation of these people, meaning the believers and the disbelievers? Why did Allah not use other things to describe them, uh, excluding the face? Why is the face the focus here of this ayah? Because the surah, why, why is actually um, the face emphasized here? Do you know? If you know, raise your hand. Let me see. I'm going to go to the group's participants and see who raised their hands. I'll give you a few seconds to raise your hand if you know, and then I will ask. Any others? We have Sister Farzana. Any others who know the answer? Okay, Sister Farzana, you may go ahead. If you have the answer, go ahead. Yes, I think it's just because face shows our emotion most correctly. Okay, that's actually a good answer. But the, the answer that the Mufassirun provide, they say because this chapter starts with the face of the Prophet Sallallahu His facial expression, Abasa wa tawalla. He frowned and turned away, right? The focus of this chapter, the beginning talks about the face. 
And at the end, it comes back to the face. SubhanAllah. So the face is the source of our expressions. And if we go back, this is um, Ayah 30, 38. So faces, since the surah in the beginning talks about the face, this face, our face expresses different feelings, right? The prophet frowned, turned his face, but there are different feelings and different emotions that humans express. If we limit those emotions to two specific categories of people, we have those people who will be happy, who will be joyful, who will be contented, and on the other end of the spectrum, we have those people who will express sadness, misery, depression, right? So that facial expression here, for instance, we talk about musfira, right? The first category of people, musfira. Musfira means bright. One type of, one first category, they will be bright. Al-isfar, uh, al-isfar means um, uh, flu fluorescence, you know, fluorescence, um, something bright, fluorescent. Uh, it also refers to a vivid, either bright or vivid color, very bright face. Right? May Allah make us among these people, I mean, on the day of judgment. So, Mustabishira, what about this face? This first category of people, we learn more about them in Ayah 39. They are laughing, happy, laughing, rejoicing at good news. And why are they laughing? Why are they happy? Because of what is awaiting them. What is awaiting them? So I'm going to open a short parenthesis here, which will, uh, I think you will be interested by it. So if we have the word here, right? Rejoicing at good news. We look at the Arabic, mustabashir. Now look at the way things are written here. We have two other words which are derived or uh, related to this word mustabashir. We have bishara and we have bashara. Right? Do you know the meaning of the other two words? Mustabashir, rejoicing, rejoicing, happy. Then we have bishara. Do you know bishara, the second word? Have you heard about this word bishara before? Okay, no. I tell you, bishara means tidings or good tidings, bishara. And bashara, bashara, it refers in Arabic to skin, skin, right? So if you Google in Arabic bashara, you'll find faces of skin, people's skin, okay? Now let me explain to you something, inshallah. Uh, the word bishara here, which is um, the second word after... Uh, in the PDF, Bishara. This word Bishara uh, means tidings, okay? It is derived from uh, something which changes the, the complexion or the facial color. Bishara is actually, it means news. But for the most part, in cultural aspect, not in Quran, right? Because you have to separate culture from Quran. In the culture of the Middle East and other, uh, you know, Arabic countries, Bishara is a good news. Okay, I have Bishara for you. It means good news. But in the Quran, it's news. It's not good or bad. It it can be good and it can be bad. And I will show you an example. But if we come back to why why I have color coded these uh, these three words, the first word Mustabishira is used in ayah 39, which means good news. So we have here, indeed, good news. Uh, bishara, as I told you, can refer to either good or bad news. But what is the connection of Bashara? Why is Bashara there? Why is this skin there? The third word um, means that the Bishara, the news that changes your skin complexion or color, um, that is why we use the word bashara, okay? So our skin will change color according to the news which comes to it. And we know in English we have the expressions like bad face, bad news face, or good news face, right? 
But for bishara, in fact, this word can be either bishara bil khair or bishara bishar. So meaning that the news can be either good, happy news or bad news. So how do we know that? I will give you an example from the Quran. If you go to Surah Al-Inshiqaq, Surah Al-Inshiqaq, I believe, is also in Juz Amma, right? Yeah, it is. So in Surah Al-Inshiqaq, um, chapter 84, the word Bishara is used, but in this case, it's not used as good, good news. Uh -huh. So give them tidings of a painful punishment, okay? So Bishara in the Quran, not culturally, not Arabic used in different countries and different cultures, but in the Quran, Bishara can be good or bad. In the same way as I explained to you in the past, Jazakallah, Yajzillah, Allah can give good jaza or bad jaza. That's your reward. Because when we use reward culturally, we think, Hmm, it sounds like a good news, right? Reward is usually a good thing. But that's your reward. That's what you have worked for. Meaning that is <laughs> what you deserve, to be honest. Okay, so uh, in this case, those beautiful faces that are radiant, that are shining, that are bright. They are smiling. They are happy because they know something good is awaiting them. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the second category of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing. And other faces that they will have upon them dust, dust, okay? Faces covered with dust, darkened by dust. How do we know they are darkened by dust? We know it from Ayah 41. Those faces, blackness will cover them. Okay, so qatara, this word qatara, it's not with ta, it's not qatara, it's qatara, 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 with ta. It refers to darkness, it refers to dark dust, dark dust. So those faces will be covered by dark dust, okay? Um, so what happens to those faces, we will know at the end of the ayah. At the end of the chapter, chapter uh, 80 ends with Ayah 42 that says, Okay, in the same way as chapter 78 ends with those disbelievers wondering and wishing they could be turned into dust. I wish I was transformed in dust. Here, those people who will be part of those unhappy news people will be those, the, the people whose face will be covered with thick or dark dust, black dust, will be the people of disbelief. Um, so the difference between those two words, if we read the English translation, those are the disbelievers, the wicked ones. The disbelievers, Al Kafara, the wicked ones, Al Fajara. So, what is the difference between these two words, Al Kafara, Al Fajara? Now, this Al Kafara refers to Al Amal Al Qalbi, the actions of the heart, meaning rejection, disbelief. So, this, their action was Qalbi, meaning it's the heart rejection. They, they uh, disbelieve with their hearts. And the other one is fa'liyah or amaliyya, meaning they used to commit sins. Their actions show their disbelief, right? So that's why there are two words used. Al-fujr, al-fujur, sorry. Al-kufr, al-fujur. Kufr is qalbi, fujur is amali. One is the action of the heart, the other is the action of the limbs. Fujur and kufr. Kufr is rejection by heart, by disbelief, by, you know, uh, you know, rejection. And then uh, al-fajara, those who make fujur or uh, choose to commit actions of disbelief. So, inshallah, with this ayah, ayah 42, we end the tafsir. 
Okay, I want to show you one thing, brothers and sisters. Look, do you see my screen? Do you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, I have the Tertil, the Tertil app that I downloaded, but it only works for MacBook Air. It doesn't work for other. <laughs> so why is it so good, MashaAllah? So I'm gonna hide and I'm gonna try to do uh, Surah Ta'abasa memorization. Okay, so I will start like this and they will hide it. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Abasa wa tawalla an jaahu al-a'ma. Wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka. أو يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى أما من استغنى فأنت له تصدى وما عليك ألا يزكى وأما من جاءك يسعى وهو يخشى فأنت عنه تلهى I don't know why it's not working I'm sorry I have to interrupt myself I think because I'm using an external mic but if you have um, if you have um, the if you have if you have a MacBook Air, because I'm working from a MacBook Air here, you can download it and make it on your laptop, and then practice both recitation by looking at the ayat, and you can also practice memorization by hiding it. And I'm not sure why it doesn't work, but let me see. Let me see if I can do it this way. Doesn't work. For some reason, it doesn't work. But what happens is when you are reciting and it's hidden, every verse you recite will be highlighted and will progressively follow your recitation to test yourself, to test your memorization, okay? And at the same time, if you click on the, at the bottom here and you keep pressing, you can, instead of reciting, you can listen. And you just press on this play button and you will, yeah. عَبَسَ وَتَوَلَّى أَن جَاءَهُ الْأَعْمَى وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ So this is what I want to show you. In fact, the same thing happens if you recite yourself. Every verse you recite will actually appear. Will appear. Okay. But, you know, I mean, working with different formats and platforms, sometimes it's not compatible when we do this online, uh, this uh, teaching, online teaching. Do you have any, anyone has questions? We're going to stop now, inshallah. And I hope you benefited from today's session. Jazakumullah um, khair for your attention, for your hard work. Jazakumullah khair and kasirin, yeah. So inshallah, I will conclude with our dua. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. See you my dear brothers and sisters next week inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.